What's good, YouTube? We back and today for y'all. I got y'all boys with a movement tutorial. I know y'all boys been asking for one in the comment section, and I know I've been slacking. But today for y'all, I got y'all boys finally. It's gonna be an updated one. I know I ain't did one since Warzone One, and I know a lot of the movement has changed since since then. And I'm gonna show y'all boys the basics, the advance, and I feel like a lot of things a lot of people don't talk about, or a lot of people don't do that. I feel like you guys, you guys can add to y'all bag. But in this video, I'm gonna show y'all boys my controller settings, my DS4 settings. I'm gonna really break those down, and I'm gonna also tell key points or why those settings are this and why they are that and why i feel like they are useful to me and i feel like they will also help you in your gameplay but be sure to like comment subscribe if you guys do enjoy the content turn post news on if you haven't already man and follow my twitch we do stream every day link will be down in the bio i love you boys i see you boys at the end of the video peace all right before we get to the video obviously i'm gonna start off showing my button layout and then my settings so you guys can know like what am i doing to slide what am i doing to jump etc etc so let's just get to that real quick before we get to the video so I play on Bumper Jumper Attack, and I feel like it's a best, it's the best button layout for somebody who doesn't play Claw because you always you have your left finger, you have your pointy finger on top of the LB, which is jump, and you have your middle finger on top of the R2, which is to shoot, which to aim in. And I feel like it's really easy, especially since you can slide cancel with the um, right stick, and it's really easy because it's really simple for somebody who doesn't play Claw or doesn't have paddles. I feel like it's the most easiest for me, and I've been playing it on it for about a couple years now. And um, so bumper drummer attack is with my button layout and these are my dead zones I know they are different from last video, but obviously they are different and I'm gonna show my deals for settings at the end when everything is over But these are my um, dead zones my aiming obviously I play 2020 0.70 I play linear curve type and I play black ops aim assist type and um, Automatic I feel like these are huge key factors that you guys need to have on automatic tactical sprint if you guys don't have this on turn it on right now and turn this on also this is a huge thing also and single tap i just like that slide only obviously um moving base these are just like simple things that i feel like you know you should have um on your game if you don't already have it on all right now let's start off with the basic let's start off with slide canceling and obviously since i play bunch of attack it's really simple for me this is how i do the slide cancel all right right stick l1 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 you guys can do the fast ones, you know, to get around the map fast if you want to. But for me, I kind of like to do like the little long slides. It makes it a little bit more smoother and it makes it look like a more cleaner player. But slide canceling is pretty much a basic. It's really like easy to do and it's really efficient in your gameplay. I feel like everybody should be slide canceling if they're not. And I feel like you should add it to your gameplay and see how much of a difference it makes. All right, next is another basic I like to call snaking. And this is something you're doing. Say if a team is shooting you, you're weak and you're plating up. For example, say if I'm out here and I'm weak and I need to plate up and if someone's in front of you want to see, but you don't, but you need to plate up and you're weak, you can just snake and it's really easy. Just For me, it's really just right stick and then just pull my stick down, right, pull my stick down, pull my stick down. It's easy. And it's like a little headless POV that can't really see you. At the same time, say, for example, if I'm plating up, you can still plate up and it's safe. They push up, boom, you can slide, boom. It's really simple. It's really easy. I feel like snaking helps, especially in situations if you are weak and you want to get that team wipe and you need to play it up. I feel like snaking is a very additional to have in your game. All right, now that we got the basics out the way, I let's kind of jump forward and just go straight to an advance. I feel like those are two basic key points that you really need, and those are things that if you don't already do, they will change. The they will change your game completely. All right, this one right here, I call this the step back, the fadeaway. This one is my favorite thing to use, especially when the team is pushing you and you can sound horn. Say, for example, if someone's coming around the corner right here, you can hear them. You boom this and then you fade away back. I'm obviously going to show a clip of the POV, so look at the clip right here. This is example of what I'm talking about. And the fadeaway is really simple to do. It's really easy and it's very efficient because it breaks a lot of people's cameras and breaks down aim assist, I really feel like. And like I said, it's really easy to do. Say for example, someone's coming around here, you slide, shoot, and then you jump back immediately fast. And it's really easy. Like again, say if someone's coming around this corner, you shoot once and then you fade back. It's really easy. And it's very efficient and it does a lot of the times break their cameras and it makes them lose aim assist. I feel like, the, I call it the fadeaway or the step back and I feel like a lot of people don't do it, but it's a very clean move to have in your bet book bag. So for sure, a lot of people should try that out and start using it. Okay, obviously the the basic B hop. I know it's a lot, it's a lot of harder to do in this game, but I feel like a lot of people can get it down in some situations. But a lot of times it does not work. Sometimes you do get flat footed like that, and it kind of looks a little weird and clunky. But how I do it is what I like to do. Is so for example, say if I'm running, I like to jump, and right before I land, I like to jump again. So jump and then jump again, boom. And then from the other, from any point of view, it kind of looks a little crazy, kind of looks good. But B hop is very, very efficient to use, especially in gunfights when a lot of people like to drop shot, a lot of people are just standing still. It kind of breaks their aim assist, and I feel like it's very useful. Just boom, like again, just slide and just jump, 
What I like to do is I jump in it. Boom, jump, and jump right after. While I'm right before I plant, right before my foot hits the ground, I jump again, jump again. And from the enemy's point of view, it looks very good, and I feel like it's very useful. And for all my people who like doing, you know, the little spins looking at the ground, this is really easy. I feel like this is something like everybody should know. Really just have, like, I feel like it really looks faster on 2020. And all you gotta do is just look on the ground and just spin. And I feel like I do this a lot of times after I kill someone. I will kill them, boom, and then do a 360 at the ground. And But I feel like it just looks cleaner and looks smoother. And it just makes the player look a lot more flashier, which I like. At the same time, you just boom. Say, for example, you kill someone, boom, and spin. And then boom, go my next kill, spin, et cetera, et cetera. This is not something that you need to do. But if you want to look like a flashier player, this is something that a lot of the flashy players do do. But I feel like it's very efficient. All right, next is just something a little additional. There's a little knife, little flip. Oh, ni little knife trips. Not talking about this knife. I'm talking about the thorn knife, for example. Say if you're like, you know, slide can't see throwing the thorn knife at the ground. Just something you can do. It's just very, look it looks cool. And I feel like it's just something that makes you look at more of a flashier player. Or say if you're, you know, just running around the map, 360 slide and a knife flip. It's just something that looks cool. And it's not very, it really does nothing. It just makes you look more of a flashy player. For example, this is what this is about. And it's very easy to, to do. And it's pretty much simply, it's very one of the most easiest basic things to do knife flip now obviously the old good and shake screen we just run in and shaking your screen it's really easy you really just running around shaking your right stick you can load 360 inside just running around shaking your screen 360 just make it look better so you just don't look like you're doing this the whole time it can look kind of dumb but yeah the old shaking screen it's really easy just hold your y button and just shake your screen 360 whatever you want and you can a little shake screen i feel like this is just a lot what a lot of the moving players does uh, you know at, the, at times i feel like it does get you killed a lot but from my point of view, I feel like it makes the clips look a lot better. And then I feel like it's just something that it makes you look like a good flashy player. It's a little shake screen. It's very simple, it's very easy to do. Everybody pretty much does it. If they don't, then they should. I feel like if you want to look like a flashy player, I don't know how you can be a flashy player without shaking your screen in my opinion. But at, I mean, at the end of the day, a lot of people have their own opinions, but I feel like this is something that a lot of us flashy moving players do. And it's something that looks good for our clips. And I like it. It's just a little shake screen. It's very easy. Just literally just wiggle your right screen and your white it's my fault wiggle your right stick in a circle and it's very easy to do and it makes your clips look a lot better than like a flashier player just a shake screen that's it all right tax sprint i feel like a lot of people don't know how to reset their tax sprint which is something really easy to do and it's very 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 something very useful and something that a lot of people should get down because a lot of times you can't get movement if you don't have your tax sprint. for example you see i'm running with my gun up up, 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 down. Tax sprint gone. It, it used to be able you could slide cancel reset it, and sometimes it does, but sometimes it doesn't. See, no tax sprint. I slide, tax sprint gone. But a lot of times, a lot of people just run around not having tax sprint, but using tax sprint makes you faster and it's easier to slide cancel and break cameras, I really feel like. So, resetting tax sprint is very easy for me. You see, when I'm running out, okay, I have my tax sprint. And I will slide or do a 360, then sometimes I'll reset. That's what, for me, it works every time to reset. What I do is just, I literally just slide to a 360 and then it resets every single time for some reason. But it's very easy. Resetting, resetting your tax sprint is very easy. Just a lot of times you slide cancel or you can do a little knife flip. I don't have my knife doing knife. Sometimes when you pull out your knife, it automatically resets. But also that will also help. But literally just slide cancel, do a 360. My, mine reset every single time and it works for me. So, but a lot of people it doesn't. So. That's just really useful. Resetting your tax sprint. Tax sprint is very needed, especially in big map situations. So resetting your tax sprint is huge, especially if you want to do all the movement factors that I've been showing. So I really feel like everybody should know how to reset their tax sprint. All right, now that now that we got all the movement factors, I feel like that are very useful and a lot of people should use and the tricks that I use on a daily basis. Now I'm going to get to my DS4 settings, which I do feel like play a huge part in some of these factors. So I'm gonna go ahead and full screen this and I'm gonna turn off the camera so you guys can see everything. And I'm gonna break down a lot of the things. Okay, so my left stick, I really don't touch, and it's more of the right stick what I really focus on. Because for one, you're moving with your right stick a lot, and you're shooting with your right, right stick a lot. And for me, I have my anti-dead zone at 0 0.10, and sometimes I put it to 0 0.11, but I put it back down to 0 0.10. It just feels like, I only do that when I'm playing a lot, or if I'm not playing a lot, it depends. I, I up it if I'm playing a lot, and I put it back down, say if I haven't played in a day or two, for example. But I feel like this right here, anti-dead zone, it does help you feel like more of a looser player and a lot of people don't say that but anti dead zone it does give you stick drift indeed as you can see sometimes i do have stick drift but i feel like it does make you feel like a looser player and i feel like it also does help with movement and for my output curve on my right stick i do use linear i know a lot of people use enhanced precision but i feel like me using enhanced precision I have tried it out it makes me feel more clunky and then it kind of makes my 
when I aim in, it makes me feel a little bit more, I don't know, stiff or feel too slow. And I, I just didn't like it. And I like linear because at the same time, I'm going to go down and then which helps with aim. And I feel like um, linear just makes me feel smooth at the same time and loose. And at the same time, if I go down here, my upper curve, as you can see on my L2 and my R2 are enhanced precision. And these two right here, I felt like help with aim assist. And I feel like it also helps with aiming a little bit but at the end of the day this is my personal opinion and a lot of people don't use it but i like to use it because a lot of times say if you do use linear and you go to an enhance enhance does make you feel clunky but then that's where you go to your output curve on your right stick and you can up this say for example if a lot of people if people play on 0.6 and you put this and they have linear and you put enhance on and it feels clunky just up it like 0 0.8 0 0.9 just find out the groove that you like and find out something that feels good to you but enhance on my L2 and R2 on both of these, I like them and it makes my aim feel good and it makes my movement feel good and I don't feel bothered and I don't feel like I'm being held back. And these are something huge key factors that I have been using and I feel like a lot of people should use if they don't know about it. And if they do know about it, I feel like they should try it out and tweak their settings and I feel like it will help their gameplay so much more. You change to 45, 45. So um, if instead if you don't like 47, 47, 47, you could change these to 45, 45, 45. I do use both of those. Sometimes I I'll go back, back and forth. But th these is my macro settings of my YOY timing. And I know a lot of people have been asking. So here you guys go. And then, now you guys got it. And I like it. It's not, it's not too fast and it's not slow. And it's something that I've been using since Warzone 3. And I like it. All right, you boys, that's the movement guide I got for y'all boys today. Let me know what you guys think down below. Let me know if you guys feel like I missed out on something. Let me know if you guys liked the video or if I explained everything correctly or I rushed through it. Just let me know. I, any feedback is good feedback in my eyes. But I hope you guys do enjoy the settings, the DS4 settings as I broke down and walked through you guys through everything. Not much change for my settings a little bit, but I pretty much show, showed you guys everything of my settings I play on. So if you want to play exactly like me, then you guys can. You guys have every single thing of out there. But um, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And, and turn post notifications on. I greatly appreciate that. And if you guys haven't already, follow my socials, follow my Twitch and my kick and every single social I have down there. I do stream every day on Twitch. So be sure to um, drop by, drop a follow. I'll just say what's up and say what video you came from. But yeah, I hope you boys have a good one. I will catch up boys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.